Okay, this is E3720 week 4 lecture 1 stability uh, This is chapter 6 from your book So for these online lecture videos, I'm going to try to limit them to like 20 minutes um, Okay, maximum 30 minutes. I'll try to make them 20 minutes So what that will entail is me writing out some of the stuff on my tablet and then as we go through it filling in the missing pieces specifically the examples so let's get started uh, recall that when we first started 3720 we talked about the idea behind control system design as three steps stability steady state error and transient response now the first thing is you have to stabilize the system you can't con compensate for a system that is unstable hence we are starting with stability now the main concept in chapter 6 is this technique called as the route Horowitz criterion now this is an algorithmic procedure that will that we will employ to do two things okay it is determine the number of poles in the right half plane and unlike Mason's gain rule in the sense the route Horowitz criterion seems difficult to apply but where it is very useful is in point number two that is the determined in design that is to determine the range of gain values for stability and we will look at point number two in the next lecture but for now we'll just get an idea of the criterion by utilizing it to determine the number of poles in the right half plane again you can just solve your system uh, your denominator polynomial on a calculator and see if any of the roots or the poles of the system have positive real parts however that's not where the power of this criterion is displayed so unlike Mason's rule we'll actually use this for design in the next lecture but for now applying the route Horowitz criterion is simple enough in the sense we first generate a route table and the number of sign changes in the first column equals the number of right half plane poles now, there are two special cases which will address there is zeros in the first column and a row of zeros but the main point of this chapter is for you to practice this generating the route table Again, on the exam, I will give you an example route table so you don't have to memorize the procedure. Okay. So let's look at an example of the basic route table. And for this example, I'm going to choose a fourth order polynomial like it is in your book. I could have chosen an nth order polynomial, but to keep things simple, so you see the algorithm, I'll use a fourth order polynomial. So the first thing we do is we write out uh, these polynomial the s powers as you read s4 s3 s2 s1 and then s0 okay and then we write out the coefficients so a4 a3 a2 a1 a0 and then 0 and then the rest obviously 0 so the first two rows are simple enough now to generate the third row what you do is you take the determinant of the two rows above it and divide by the coefficient right above uh, this B1 here but then a couple of things number one you put a negative sign and with the determinant a 2 by 2 determinant which is always what you will get uh, when you're doing the route table a 2 by 2 determinant is simply defined as AD minus BC now the only trick if you will in this route table is so B1 is a4 a3 a2 a1 determinant negative sign divided by a3 the trick is when you generate this you move for the second column of the determinant you move a column over so basically you get negative of a4 a3 a0 0 divided by a3 that's it and then b3 you will now see as you move as you keep moving a column over eventually you're going to run into a column of zeros so eventually this will become zero so as you go down your route table will start shrinking the sense let's go to the fourth row so c1 will be negative a3 b1 a1 b2 determinant divide by b1 c2 will be negative a3 b1 but now we have 0 0 so obviously 0 times b1 minus 0 times a3 is 0 so this is gone so finally d1 which will be the coil for the s0 term should be the last non-zero entry and it is okay and then you see in the first column the number of sign changes you have that's equal to number of poles in the right half plane 
So now let's look at a skill assessment exercise on page 307. We're going to determine how many routes are in the right half plane. Okay, so the way I'm going to solve this problem is I'm going to set up the route table, pause the lecture, and then go through the route table. You should basically do the same in the sense use this technique to generate the route table uh, to finish the route table for this polynomial and then compare answers with the video so let's first start let me start it out so here's s7 s6 s5 s4 s3 s2 s1 s0 and the coefficients are 3 9 6 5, oh, 6, oh, be careful, 3, 9, 6, 4, 7, 8. And on the exam, looking at the silly mistake I was about to make, I want to ask you to determine how many routes are on the right half plane. We will apply the route Horowitz criterion to design problems, as I mentioned in the next lecture. Okay. That's what is the fun of this method is. So the exam will pretty much all be design problems. Okay. Anyway, so to generate Let's call this B1, B2, B3. And you can see that after this, it's going to be 0. Because if you think about it, B1 is these two. B2 is these two. B3 is, oops, what was it? B1 is these two. Ah, B1 is these two. When you're doing the determinant entries, B2 is these two. B3 is these two. And then here, it's this and 0, 0. So it's going to be all zeros from here. So B1 is basically going to be negative determinant of 3, 6, 9, 4, divide by 9, which is going to be negative of 12 minus 54, divide by 9, which is going to be 42, divide by 9. Let's see, is that right? Yep. Which is equal to basically 4.6 one. Okay. So it's equal... 4.6 bar. Let me just generate this row and then I'll pause the lecture. So you have an idea of how to finish the route table. B2, let me write it here, is going to be negative determinant of 3, 9, 7, 8 over 9, which is negative of 24 minus 63 divided by 9. Which is equal to 20, no, it's not 20. What am I saying? So it's going to be 39 divided by 9, which is 4.3 bar, which is 4.3 bar. And then B3 is going to be negative of 3926. Ooh. By nine, but this is exciting. Needing the zero is going to be equal to zero. Wow, that's a nice result. So there is the third row of the route table. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the lecture, generate the rest of the route table, and we will continue after I finish generating. Of course, in real time, uh, I mean in video time, this pause is going to be like for a second. But I'll be okay. Continuing. Took me like 10 minutes to generate this. But uh, basically, here are all the entries. Hopefully, I haven't screwed anything up. But as you can see, the number of sign changes in the first column is here is one sign change. You're going from positive to negative. Okay. And then you're going from negative to positive again. The second sign change. You're going from positive to negative here. Here is the third sign change. And obviously, here's one more. The fourth sign change, okay. Therefore, number of sign changes in first column equals four, which implies we have four right half plane poles. There are no zeros, okay. No complete row of zeros. So that means there are three left half plane poles. How do I know there are totally how do I know that there are totally seven poles? Well, it's because it's seventh hour polynomial. But the left half plane poles are not what we're interested in. We have basically four right half plane poles. 
And if you look at your book, I believe, let me check. Yes, this is the solution. Okay. Okay. So that's it for the basic route table. Now the special cases are if there is a zero in the first column. This case is actually easy to deal with. So I want you to read the book for this. There are two ways to deal with this. That is, if there is a zero, what you can do is, let's say there's a zero here, you can replace this with a little epsilon, and then you can keep generating the route table. That's one way to do it. Second, you can utilize what is called as a reciprocal polynomial, which you actually get by writing these coefficients, believe it or not, in reverse order, and then going about the route table. Okay. But that's not that interesting, actually. However, there is a sp another special case where we have a row of zeros, and this requires an interesting procedure. So let's look at this. For this, I'll actually look at an example from the book. It's example 6.4. So it's determine the number of right half plane poles for this transfer function. 10 over to the fifth plus for this case I'm not going to pass the lecture I'm going to go through it and because the coefficients look oh I was about to say they look nice but here's a 42 pretty large coefficient let's see if I can multiply uh, these properly so here we go so it's s to the five s to the fourth Zero, so let's see, 1, 7, 6, 42, 8, 56, and then 0, 0. Hmm. If I think about it, these are all multiples of 7. And since this is simply, when I generate this entry here, I'm going to be dividing by the 7 anyway. I can multiply this entire row by 1, 7. So let me do that. In this sense, let me use a different color. I'm going to multiply this by 1 7th and replace this with a 1, with a 6, and with an 8. Okay? Wow, that makes it a lot, a lot easier. So let's just do this. I and mean, mathematically, it's fine, right? Because this, for generating this, I'm going to divide by a 7. Okay? Um, let's see. All right. So right here, the determinant is determinant of. Uh, let's see. Oh, this comes out very nicely. Zero. Okay. And then for this guy, let's see. Wow, zero again, because the determinant, negative of the determinant of one seven eight fifty six, and that's zero. And you can see, even if I don't multiply by seven, I mean, sorry, divide by seven, you get the same result. However. We now have a problem, that is, we have a row of zeros, okay? Now, we have to stop here because we really cannot generate this guy. So, the technique for dealing with a row of zeros is we form what is called as the auxiliary polynomial by using the entries in the, so that's the first step, in the row above the row of zeros as coefficients. Okay, so an auxiliary polynomial P of S, so here is our row of zeros. You go above it, so what I have is S to the fourth, plus 6s squared plus 8. So and now how do I know that this is the coefficient of s to the fourth? Well, that's easy to do. What about this guy? Look at where 42 came from, s squared. So as you get 6x squared, look at where 8, uh, 56 came from, or 8, whatever it is, it's from s. 
no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, look at where 56 came from. It's from S to 0. Sorry. So here is the auxiliary polynomial. Okay. That's step one. Step two is we differentiate P of S and differentiate P of S with respect to S. and use these coefficients instead of the zero row. Now, if you really want to, as we're, we're, gonna, we're almost done with this lecture, as we're wrapping this up, you might be uh, wondering how all this out Horowitz criterion works. Well, mathematically proving that out Horowitz criterion is pretty involved, but you're welcome to Google search for the appropriate papers and talk to me in office hours. I won't be covering it in the course okay, because it involves knowledge of complex analysis. But anyway, let's finish this up. So you have DPDS, differentiate this, you get 4S cubed plus 12S, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the zero with the four and this with the 12. So let me just, therefore the New row table is going to, let me regenerate this. That is, let's see, we had S to the fifth. I have the book here, so I'm going to just redo it for the book. S4, S3, S2, S1, S0. So what I have is 1, 7. 6, 42, 8, 56. Okay, so the row of zeros is right here. I'm just going to leave this at 7, 42, 56. So here is 4, 12, 0. Okay, now I can replace this and divide it by in the, this row. I'm going to divide by a 4, so multiply by 1 fourth. I get 1 and 3. Now we can continue. And actually, let me also divide this by a 7, because it just makes it easier. So 7, 6, then this is 8, okay? So this entry now is given by the negative of the determinant of 1, 6, 1, 3. So it's 3 minus 6, negative 3, but it's a negative sign. That's 3 divided by 1, so that's 3. This fellow is going to be 8. This fellow is going to be 0. Now, what about this guy? So, it's going to be 8 minus 9, negative sign 9 divided by 3. Uh, let's see, 8 minus 9, sorry, 8 minus 9 is a 1 with a negative sign is 1, so it's 1 third, I'm sorry. This is going to be a 0, obviously 0. And then this is going to be an 8. So, therefore, no sign changes in first column which implies no RHP, right half plane, poles. And this is what the solution is in your book. Um, but there you have it. The route, that's how the route Horowitz criterion works. Now, in the next lecture, what we're going to do is hopefully this doesn't crash. Oh, crap. All right. <laughs> so it did crash. Um, but hopefully I've saved enough data. However, we're done with the lecture. So next lecture, what I'm going to do, let me see how much it has saved. Wow. I have to finish this, but then I'll finish it um, shortly. But anyway, in the next lecture, we're going to apply the Routh-Horowitz criterion.